Many thanks to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this episode. More on them later. And a big thank you to Emperor Tigerstar on YouTube. He animates maps of wars all throughout history. If you haven't already, be sure to check his channel out. He'll be joining us to read out some primary sources from the war, with an impressive southern accent, I might add. I'll be doing the same for his video, so be sure to check out my southern accent as well. If someone were to ask you what is the costliest war in American history, how would you answer? Many would impulsively respond with the Second World War, or even Vietnam. However, this is simply untrue. The American Civil War was, and still is, the costliest conflict in American history. In fact, up until about 50 years ago, the casualties of the Civil War were higher than any other American wars combined. But why was this the case? There were few automatic weapons, no tanks, or high explosives. I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian, and today we're going to be examining what exactly made the American Civil War so lethal. First, it must be understood that far more men died of sickness than combat. Approximately 67% of all Civil War casualties were the result of infectious diseases such as measles, dysentery, and smallpox. This was the natural result of assembling so many men from different areas in one location, and was exacerbated by the lack of sanitation and fresh water. The loss of men to disease had significant implications on the battlefield. For example, at the Battle of Chancellorsville, 5,000 Confederate soldiers were rendered unfit for duty due to smallpox contamination. That said, disease will inevitably cause casualties in any war. However, combat in the American Civil War was still exceptionally deadly, and this was for a variety of reasons. The first reason why combat was so deadly was the extensive use of what is perhaps the most infamous munitions of the war, the Manet Ball, which was named after its inventor, the French army officer Claude Etienne Manet. Before its invention, rifles, which were loaded with musket balls, were very slow to reload, as their ammunition had to fit tightly into the barrel to accommodate the rifling. Manet solved this problem by designing a hollow, conical bullet which fit loosely in the barrel. When the rifle was fired, the hollow cavity in the projectile expanded, allowing the round to fit firmly against the rifling, giving it a spin, which drastically increased accuracy and reload speed. However, the round itself was slow and heavy, and could cause immense damage to the body. Bones that were hit generally shattered, necessitating the amputation of limbs in many cases. But rifled muskets weren't the only thing that increased battlefield casualties. The most formidable weapon in the arsenals of both sides was of course field artillery, which was invaluable on the 19th century battlefield. Improvements in weapon technology resulted in artillery being both deadlier and more accurate than ever before. Explosive shells were able to destroy entire platoons if a direct hit occurred, and the introduction of rifled artillery, such as the Parrot Gun, made such hits much more likely. According to eyewitness Sergeant Jonathan Stowe, 15th Massachusetts Infantry, What sights I've seen that I now see around me. Shells fly past me every few seconds, carrying away branches from trees and scattering limbs around. I'm in severe pain. Fury is how the shells fly. I do sincerely hope that I shall not be wounded again. By far the factor most responsible for producing casualties in combat, however, was the employment of linear tactics. As can be guessed, such accurate and deadly weapons were devastating to the static formations that were employed on the Civil War battlefield. Most of the commanders of the war had been trained at the United States Military Academy at West Point. In fact, at least one army at every major battle that was fought during the war was commanded by a West Point graduate, including such commanders as Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee. As the doctrine taught at West Point emphasized Napoleonic-era direct approach tactics, it's no surprise that both sides deployed their forces in lines, and it is equally unsurprising that both sides suffered heavy casualties as a result. It did not help that many of the generals appointed during the war had no prior military experience and were promoted due to their political positions. However, it must be understood that there was no better way to fight in open ground at the time. In battles where cover could be used, commanders usually deployed their men behind it. For example, at the Battle of Antietam, 500 Confederates hidden behind trees and walls were able to delay the advance of several Union brigades attempting to cross what would later be named Burnside's Bridge. The quintessential example of the lethality of Civil War combat is the infamous advance at the Battle of Gettysburg ordered by Robert E. Lee, known as Pickett's Charge. During the assault, 12,500 Confederate infantrymen advanced one mile across an open field under very heavy Union rifle and artillery fire. Although some Confederates reached Union lines, the assault was ultimately repulsed, with the Confederates taking over 6,000 casualties. 
The range and accuracy of rifled muskets ensured that Lee's men would begin suffering heavily well before they reached northern lines, and even before it began, the Confederates were being subjected to extensive Union bombardment. Artillery played such a considerable role in the Civil War that according to Craig Simmons in his book The Battle of Gettysburg, the artillery barrages at Gettysburg may well have been the loudest man-made sound on the North American continent until the detonation of the first atomic bomb. And in the words of Colonel Joseph Mayo of the 3rd Virginia Infantry who fought at Gettysburg, The first shot or two flew harmlessly over our heads, but soon they began to get the range, and then came pandemonium. First there was an explosion on the top of a tree, and in a second there was another, followed by a piercing shriek. Two men were killed outright and three frightfully wounded. Company F had suffered terribly, and a lieutenant had his legs shattered below the knee. Towards the end of the war, the deadliness of combat on open fields was finally recognized by commanders of both sides. Accordingly, both the North and South began to employ static defensive positions and breastworks, as can be seen at the Siege of Petersburg, which was also one of the first times that the Gatling gun was employed in battle, but in a very limited capacity. When the First World War arrived 50 years later, the American Civil War was finally seen as both foreshadowing trench warfare and representing the transition from close order formations in open ground to open order formations in cover. This lesson, however, came at the cost of 620,000 American lives. 8% of American males lost their lives in the American Civil War, and 1 in 4 soldiers would never return home. If you want to learn more about the American Civil War, namely why it was fought and how it was fought, I highly recommend you watch Professor Gary Gallagher's lecture on the entire American Civil War on the site of today's sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand learning service with some of the best lectures and courses from Ivy League professors. By subscribing, you will gain access to a massive library with over 10,000 video lectures about any major academic subject like history, science, math, literature, music, philosophy, and more. In addition to Gallagher's lecture on the American Civil War, one of the courses I just got done fully completing is Robert Wiener's The Long 19th Century. If you really want to understand the politics and atmosphere of the Victorian era, this course has got a lot to offer with 36 episodes. One of my most popular videos was actually made possible because of one of Wiener's lectures dedicated to the Crimean War. We invite you to start your free trial at The Great Courses Plus today by using my link, thegreatcoursesplus.com slash the armchair historian or by clicking the link in the description below. Lastly, don't forget to check out Emperor Tiger Star on YouTube for collaborating with me on this video. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank my general staff on Patreon. Giuseppe, Fritz, Joe Crispin, Brandon Wuwan, Derek Bello, Jake Hart, PJ Nave, Eric Greenwood, John Graham, James Thompson, Jim Talbot, Dimitri Stillman, Yannick Schwedfiger, Christopher Cliff, and everyone else listed on screen. I'd also like to thank our team, David Mayanyar, Kert Boss, and Alexander Blake for making this video possible. I'll see you next time with why the Italian army was so incompetent during World War II.